NAK pump for short, and this is an anti-porter, which allows one ion to go in one direction for an exchange of another ion. And this is a classic example of primary active transport. So what happens here is each cycle of this pump, three sodiums load onto the binding site shown here in green, and then ATP is broken down and hydrolyzed. And when I say hydrolyzed, what that means is that you take and you strip off that phosphate, the third phosphate on ATP, creating ADP. And then you also have that inorganic pyrophosphate, which is that PI. And there is channels in our membrane that are considered leaky and leaky channels in our membranes, which constantly allow ions to pass through. Whenever an enzyme phosphorylates some product, that means it's favoring the on switch. Whenever you dephosphorylate or you remove the phosphate, will then turn off. And there is an enzyme family that does this. Kinases are enzymes that favor the taking of the phosphate from ATP and you put it onto something. And these ones are the on. So just to make things a little easier, kinases are like the on switch. And then the phosphatase, which is the counterpart to this, phosphatase, are enzymes that favor the off switch. The proton pump is an example of a channel protein that performs a dedicated one pump moving the proton from the area that is lower to an area that is higher. If you ever have a very bad case of acid reflux after you eat a very big meal or a very fatty meal, that usually happens, and your stomach acid overruns, you could take a PPI like Pepsid, which basically is a proton pump inhibitor. It basically is a chemical that blocks this channel in your stomach to reduce the protons from joining into chloride so you reduce stomach acid. Co-transporters are ones that can move more than one item. So for example, the NAK pump that I told you is a pump that moves both sodium and potassium. Half of your energy, if you're just taking a daily maintenance amount of calories to maintain your body's weight, most of your calories you consume go to powering this ATP. And then over here, you can see that when sodium builds up on the ECF or the outside, it can then go back into the cell via transporters like the sodium glucose transporter, right? So imagine you're eating a big meal and you wanna get all the macros from the food, right? You wanna be able to get your protein intake and your carbohydrate intake and your fat intake. And the co-transporter is one mechanism by which you can absorb glucose into the cell, but it also comes at a cost of sodium. So if I could give you another reason why salting your food, and I wouldn't say if you have high blood pressure and salt the heck out of your food is good, but having some sodium in your diet plays a very important role for this balance.